And you know what we might get, Simone? We might get round two of Hawks and 76s in round two. Y'all don't want that smoke. Y'all not the same Hawks it, y'all was. We want that smoke, trust me. Really? Y'all don't. First of all, let I'm us sorry. Get out the play-in and let us, you know, let us, Miami. let us get out the play-in. Y'all barely in the play-in. I'm just saying it could happen. It could you happen. need to keep your sights focused on the buzzing, swarming. Oh, I, I, I am. What's going on, everybody? It is your boy Dylan Matthews and Simone. Dylan Mills is somebody that I get behind. I'm not even going cap on DeAndre Hopkins. He has the best hands in the league. Play it through it. Stayed hurt and play through it. Exactly. Hobble it on back to the field. Right. I'm saying, when you, when you, one of the best teams out there, you know, the other team's division, ain't got no choice but to try and get like you. You dig? So, I'm... So let's get right into the video. Let's go. Welcome back to another great episode of Tough Calls. Guys, today is play in, play off edition. Finally, Dylan. <laughs> It's finally here. Thank you, Lord. We made it. We made it. It's been a crazy NBA season, right? Really good, just top to bottom, from the beginning to yep. the end, yep. to a playoffs where the East, you know, the West, they, we, we, we'll tap it with the we'll, West We'll a tap it with the West in a little bit. Yeah, in a yeah. little bit, we'll tap right. it with the West. Right. I keep promising we're going to talk about it. We're going to get there later. We're going to get there eventually. We're going we're gonna to have no choice eventually. We're going we're gonna to get there. It's just they, they real top heavy. Yeah, we'll tap the them. The bottom feeders is real bottom feeders. We'll definitely be doing reactions. Yeah. Um, and once we get to into the thick of it, we'll definitely be doing more West coverage. But y'all, we got to get into all this East drama. So here is the rundown for today. We're going to start with the play-in tournament. Um, that's the first thing up. First things first, Tuesday, Wednesday, the play-in tournament is going to determine pretty much everything. Well, not everything. And then we're going to get into the matchups that are already set, which are Sixers, Raptors, Bucks, Bulls. All the other matchups are depending on the play-in tournament. So let's start with the 9-10 matchup, Dylan. Your Atlanta Hawks versus the North Carolina. North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? Born and raised. Yeah. Charlotte Hornets. You never claimed them. I, did I say I claimed them? I just sang a song. Oh, okay. <laughs> All I say was you a song. A little, you got a little too excited about the Hornets. Well, I mean, they did give me my first internship job. You know I'm going for y'all. Are you? After that little ditty, I don't know. All I said was versus the North Carolina, born and raised. Yeah, you know we only got one song. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> but, yeah, set the stage for that matchup and what it means. So, just to go back and give you guys some context, we did split with the Charlotte Hornets this year. Um, lost 2-1-2. We did end up winning the tiebreaker, though, because we had the better division record. Um, so that's why we're the ninth seed and they're the 10th seed. I think we were a game better anyway. But anywho, it's going to be a good game. Both of these teams have similar playing styles. They like to run, score a lot of points, but they both ain't great defensively. So it, I anticipate a high-scoring game. But one thing to note is that the last time the Hawks and the Hornets played, the, Haw the Hornets, excuse me, found a way to shut down Trey Young. Ooh. He was 0 of 6 from 3 Ooh. and only had 9 Points. And that was the most recent matchup. So they could have something on film. They probably will go back to that game field and see what they did against the yes. Hawks to, you know, really shut down Trey Young. Now, on the other hand of that, the Hawks also have that same film. They can figure out how they can attack whatever Charlotte was doing to take away Trey Young so effectively. So I feel good about the Hawks in this situation. The main thing about this is who's going to get the stops defensively. They both can score points. We both are going to be able to knock down shots, this, that, and the third. Who's going to step up and get the stops? Also, which bench unit is going to be better? I don't anticipate Trey Young only having nine points and being 0-6 from three. I just don't. Playoff Trey Young is different. It's going to be on national TV, too. National TV Trey Young is different. So, and the Hawks are now, you know, should be in that stage where they're motivated. We remember Trey Young came back and said the sec in the second game of the season that he just wished the playoffs are here. Well, Trey, the playoffs been here for us, and he stated that too, but now they really, really are here. So it's time to step up. The Hawks will be motivated. The Hornets will be motivated too, though, and they're hot. They've won eight out of their, no, excuse me, they won 11 out of their last 15 games, Ooh. and they're on a three-game winning streak Ooh. as well. So the Hornets are playing well. Hawks are obviously playing well, and it's going to be, it's going to be two good matchups. But for me, it's which team can get the most stops? You know, obviously, 
And, I, you know, it's going to come down to the others, too. You know, is Kevin Herter going to have a, a big game? This is technically a game seven. We need game seven Kevin to come out like he did against the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, not sure if John Collins is going to be back. Probably not. Um, we're going to have to obviously find ways to neutralize, you know, uh, LaMelo Ball, Miles Bridges, and, and those guys. So, you know, is Danilo Gallinari going to keep stepping up like he has been um, starting for John Collins? So it's going to come down to the others. Trey Young's going to do his thing, but it's going to be a real good matchup, but it's going to come down to defense. I think I saw something, too, about y'all's home record. Like, y'all have a really good home record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, our last, like, two months, we we only lost probably, like, one, maybe two games at home. Like, we, our home record, you know, it, it started off good. It was a little shaky in the middle, but then we finished. We closed at home very, very well. So we beat the Suns at home. We beat the Bucks at home. Beat the Cavs at home. I mean, we beat a lot of very, very good teams at home this year. So I'm feeling good about us on our home court. Everybody's gonna be piped up, amped up, turned up, and we're gonna be ready to get this, uh, get this dub. But we got a lot of work to do. So Dilla, yeah, like you're saying, this is a win, a must-win game, or y'all yeah. are out. Period. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We we didn't get in that seven-eight game, so we have no margin for error. We win, or our season is done. So mm, that's tough. But like I said, it's gonna be hard to contain. It's gonna be hard to, to, to keep Trey Young down twice. It's hard for a team. It's, it's gonna be hard for the Hornets to replicate what they did mm-hmm. um, last time mm-hmm. with Trey Young. Like you said, only having nine points like that. That's the once in a blue moon uh, performance. And also to put it out there now, the Hornets did make the play in last year. They didn't make it out of the play in, but they did make the play in last year. Obviously, the Hawks went on their run. So the playoff experience does favor the Hawks in that scenario. So, you know, we have that we have that little advantage as well. So we'll see. Juicy, 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 big, spicy. But before we get into the playoff matchups, um, Bucks and Bulls, Sixers and Raptors, let's talk a little bit more about the play-in scenario. So a lot of people keep talking on the internet about potential matchups with the Nets. And what I mean is, Oh, there's people already saying, oh, like when the Celtics and Bucks game was going on, like, oh, why would the Celtics, the Celtics should lose so they can get the three seed and play the Bulls um, and then avoid the two seed and having to play the Nets. First of all, the Nets haven't even gotten the seventh seed yet. The Nets are in the play in for a freaking reason. Now, the Nets are, they have. Kyrie and KD are amazing players. Mm. I'm not even going to say amazing team yet because the team hasn't played amazing. Mm. All we know is Kyrie and KD are amazing. Kyrie hasn't shown up all the time. The team hasn't shown up. The game against the Pacers last night, that was a game. close. If they lost that game, they would have been the eighth seed, right? No, they would have lost that game. They would have been the nine. They would have been the nine seed. We would have been the ten seed. Exactly. Last night, that Pacers game has so many implications, and they and I'm glad Van Gundy, we don't be agreeing that much, but he kept saying the Nets have just been playing so uninspired. You wouldn't think that that game against the Pacers, they didn't have a fire lit under them. You wouldn't think that they were in danger of falling to the non seed if they lost that game. Right. So, like we said before, the Nets might turn it up when they get into the playoffs, mm. but at the end of the day, who freaking knows. So if I'm the Bucks or if I was the Celtics or the 76ers, I want to get the highest seed as possible. Right. And the Celtics did that. I'm not worried about potentially playing the Nets at the seventh seed because the Nets right now are the seventh seed going into the play-in. But in order to keep that seventh seed, they have to beat the Cavs. Right. But they will have two chances. If they lose the Cavs, they will have another chance yeah. beating the winner of Hawks Hornets. Mm-hmm. The Nets could easily be the eighth seed. They could. They could easily be the AC. So I'm saying, let's stop acting like, oh, it's a lock for the Nets to be the seventh seed. And even if they are the seventh seed, honestly, out of all the teams in the playoffs, the the East right now, the Nets are one of the teams I'm not worried. I'm worried about the Cavs the least, mm-hmm. and then the Nets. No, I'm worried about the Cavs, the Bulls, and then the Nets. Yeah. I'm least worried about the Cavs, least worried about the Bulls, and least then the Nets. Yeah. So I'm saying they're not even in my top three of worry. Okay. <laughs> I just had to get that off my freaking chest. Say what you had to say. <laughs> how are you? How are you feeling exactly though about the uh, about the Nets Cavs matchup? It's time to wake up. Anywho, <laughs> um, I, I feel like it, it could be a real interesting matchup. Like you said, the Nets could turn on, but they've been so inconsistent this year. So we don't know. And then it, you know, Evan Mobley is back. He was injured. I don't. Jared, he's gonna be back. I, he's already back. He's, oh, he's been back for the, like the last two regular season games. Mm. The one thing is Jared Allen gonna be back along mm-hmm. with that though because. 
if Jared Allen and Evan Mobley are back, that's a big size advantage for Very for big. the Cavs. So they they could they could take advantage of that there maybe down low because. I mean, Claxton is long, yeah, but I mean, you got two twin towers down there mm-hmm. with Jared Allen and Evan Mobley if Jared Allen is back. I'm not sure if he's going to be back or not for the plan, but that's something to look out for as well. So, like you said, it's not even a guarantee that the Nets get out. Exactly. Big Thriller. Let's stop the narrative. Stop the narrative. Okay? And, if, and if they do get out and they do end up playing the Celtics, the Celtics have been hot. They've been arguably the hottest team in basketball, probably next to the Grizzlies. Um, this whole second half of the season post All Star break. So we're gonna see. We're gonna get. Let's not get a little too ahead of it. We're gonna go We're gonna go Let's talk about. Okay, so we talked about the playing mm-hmm. Nets, Cavs, Hawks, Hornets. They're gonna be determining a lot um, for the Heat and for the Bucks. Yeah. But let's get into the two playoff matchups that we already know. Starting with the Philadelphia Sixers versus the Toronto Raptors. Now. Obviously, the Raptors have been extremely hot as of late. The Raptors, I saw a stat. I want to say they, I believe they won at least 12 matchups against the top four teams. Sounds about um, right. This season. Sounds about right. Of course, right. they got two versus the six. No, they're set. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. They're <laughs> seven and two against the top four. Bucks, wow. Celtics, Sixers, and um, is it Bulls? No, no Bucks, six. Celtics, and Heat. Heat, yeah. They're seven and two. The Raptors are seven and two against the top four. Four teams. Um, they got two of their wins, obviously, against the Philadelphia 76ers. Mm-hmm. Now, my thing and with this matchup, now, a lot of stats are being pulled. You know how stats are being pulled from the past? Oh, Joel Embiid is averaging, average, what, 20 or 17 points in them. But that was when Marc Gasol was with the Raptors. This is a new Raptors team. And now, the Raptors did get the best of the Sixers this season. Mm-hmm. But you know me, and I say this across all sports properties. It's hard to beat a team, which would now be three times in a row for the Raptors. Exactly. That's not happening. First of all, the Sixers, now, James Harden is definitely going to be the X factor when it comes to this matchup against the Raptors. Right. We already know the bench. The bench, the Sixers bench is a known, okay? A yeah. known quantity. Yeah. We know it's the bench goes up. I mean, point blank, period, okay? But we the are, Raptors bench isn't that great either. Yeah, they're not, but they have so many more playmakers just starting. You know what I'm saying? That they don't need to get as much from their bench, in my opinion. Um, It's going to be a big question whether Fred Van Fleet is going to be back. He's been nursing an injury and OG Amanobi. Mm -hmm. When we played them this season, we did not face Fred Van Fleet. Mm -hmm. Um, These past two games, Fred Van Fleet hasn't played, so that's going to be a big question mark. Um, They're youngin', Scotty Barnes. uh, Where does Scotty go? Florida State? Yes. Florida State. Scotty Barnes, he mainly has been guarding James Harden since we've had James Harden in our Raptors matchups. He's definitely, I mean, we know the Raptors defense is locked down. He's definitely gotten the best of James Harden. Now, James Harden has definitely, you know, he's got the facilitation on lock. We know he can share the ball well. Mm -hmm. But we're going to need James Harden to put up points. Yes. Big period. Like, okay, we get it, the assist, the facilitation, running the offense. That's all great, but at the end of the day, we're going to need to put up points. Mm-hmm. Joel Embiid, we know, is going to drop whatever he needs to drop. The yeah. max amount. Joel Embiid is going to feast. Joel Embiid yeah. is going to eat. Yeah. The bench, we can't rely on the bench. But what we know is that James Harden, the series against the Raptors is going to come down to whether James Harden steps up or not. Yeah. Joel Embiid is a known. We know Joel Embiid is going to ball. Joel Embiid is going to dominate. Mm-hmm. He's going to be the best player on the court. He is the best player on the court. Right. What it's going to come down to, will James Harden step up? Offensively. Exactly. Bucketly. Not just assistly. <laughs> <laughs> Put that one in the Urban Dictionary. You know what I'm saying? Yes. If James Harden is the James Harden that we saw back in Houston, if he's the James Harden that, you know, we even saw back in OKC, then the y'all be fine. It'll be it'll still be a tough series. It's definitely going to be a tough series. I'm not yeah. denying that. Right. The Raptors, like I said, they have playmakers on playmakers all around. You know what I'm saying? Right. Everything can't rely on Joel and beat. Tobias Harris has been playing really well yeah. as of late. He's coming yeah. into the playoffs hot, which we need. He'll be him an to X be. factor too. Definitely. But what no, James is the X factor. Yeah, I mean James is definitely the biggest he I think James is the, the deciding factor. James is the deciding factor. Tobias will be an X factor though. And then also another thing to look out for, like you said, both benches, there's no 
super heavy favorite towards either bench. So I think the bench production for both teams is going to be a big part of, mm -hmm. you know, what happens in the series as well. It's going to be a good series, though. The Raptors are a scrappy team. Do what they need to do defensively. They're balanced too. See, the thing wise. about the Raptors, the Raptors get a lot of steals. Our last game against the Raptors, well, they forced a lot of turnovers. We had 17 turnovers. Mm -hmm. um, we're terrible in transition. I think teams are scoring 60, they're scoring like around 63% on us in transition. Another thing to look out for too in y'all series, the Raptors, I don't know if they're the number one offensive rebounding team. I'm pretty sure they're the number one offensive rebounding team in the league. So that's another thing to look out for too. Um, now that might only come into play heavy when Joel Embiid is out of the game because I feel pretty good because the Joel Raptors Embiid's don't. Joel Embiid's to play the whole game. The Raptors don't have a true big man, and that plays well to you know obviously Joel Embiid because he's pretty much going to mm -hmm. have the, a pretty sizable advantage mm -hmm. down low in the post whoever he's going up against. So he should be able to gobble up most of the rebounds. But when he's out of the game, that's when you need to look out for that offensive rebound statistic. And the thing that's going to be tough is because this series just. And not even just series, this whole playoffs, is that we live and die by Joel and B. Yes. Well, no. We live and die by what? James Harden. James Harden. Because yeah. we know what Joel is going to be. Yeah, Joel's live, been consistent all year. Exactly. We live and die by the others. Yes. Stepping up and continuously stepping up. Right. My thing is, Joel and B is going to have to play every game all game especially when we go to toronto we're not going to have matisse Thybul. matisse mm, Thybul, our best be perimeter defender that's gonna be huge in toronto was he guarding spicy p or who was he out siakam yeah i mean he just roamed he's a roamer that's gonna be big too because pascal siakam spicy p been real spicy lately he's been going he's been on a tear to end this season so that's gonna be something to look out well for when too we played matisse the Thibel. game the last game when he had the triple double matisse wasn't playing because we were in Toronto. Yikes. Yeah. So, and then if Fred Van Fleet comes back. Yeah, and then Gary Trent Jr., if he gets mm -hmm. hot too, because Gary Trent Jr., when he gets hot, he's an uh, inferno because he had that stretch where he was, you know, had like five or six games where he had like 30 plus points for five straight games. So, and the Raptors have found a way, at least the last two games, to lock down James Harden. Like I said, yeah. it's mainly been. Um, Scotty Barnes. Right. But, you know, Gary would have some time guarding him. Mm -hmm. Prince. I keep on calling him Princess. <laughs> Prince has spent time guarding him uh, as well. So, but it's mainly been Scotty Barnes. But yeah. they definitely flock. Anytime James Harden gets the ball, yeah. <laughs> dino arms just all in the face. <laughs> dino arms. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, they. But James is going to have to step his year. Because, like I said, everything comes down to. Joel and B. Mm -hmm. I just we gotta manage him right yes. this playoffs. Yes. And it's you tough do. because we have such a turmoil turmoil is tomorrow. I don't even know his word. We have such a <laughs> tough, tumultuous. Tumultuous, I think. Maybe. We have such a tough, tough, tough first round matchup. It is. The man can't get a break, That's boy. Really tough. You know, and then the also. But also, all that G talking, the Raptors, and all them want to talk so much G. I, I mean, that's going to fuel Joel and B. It is. But Joel and B is the one that needs fueling. The he's one not, who needs he's fueling gonna be, he's is. He's going to be fired up anyway. Exactly, it's James. If right. he's not getting to the free throw line, he's not producing. Maybe the maybe Jurassic Park will fire him up. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so the Raptors, long, athletic. They're all long, athletic, good defensively. It's going to be a tough matchup for y'all for sure. But again, James Harden comes in with the right mindset. He comes in actually scoring the ball, too, along with facilitating. Y'all be fine, even with Matisse Stiebel out in, you know, those games in Toronto. But and that's going to be a really good matchup, something I'm looking out for. And you know what we might get, Simone? We might get round two of Hawks and 76s in round two. Y'all don't want that smoke. Y'all not the same Hawks y'all was. We want that smoke, trust me. Y'all really? don't. First of all, let I'm us sorry. Get out the play in and let us, you know, let us Miami. let us get out the play in. Y'all barely in the play in. I'm just saying it could happen. It could you happen. need to keep your sights focused on the buzzing, swarming. Oh, I, I, I am I'm saying we wrapping up the video and I'm just, you know, putting a little nugget. We could we could get another. You get way, way too ahead of yourself. I'm just saying. Focus on Tuesday. It's Wednesday. Wednesday. Actually, actually. So yeah, I'm focused on Wednesday. I, trust me. I got, Wait, I how would that matchup happen? If we beat Miami and y'all beat, um, oh, if y'all gotta beat Charlotte first. I know we oh, beat, dear. we beat, <laughs> <laughs> we beat Charlotte. Then we beat the loser of Cleveland, Brooklyn. Then we 
go to Miami and handle business there. Went you four out of seven there. Way too and then y'all handle y'all business against Toronto. Y'all, you get and way And then boom, boom, boom. We get a nice little eight four matchup. But like I you get way too ahead <laughs> of yourself. I know, I am getting way ahead of myself. But at the friends. same time, I'm sorry, Dilly. Y'all not the same team. Okay. But what about a Ben Simmons coming back? Ooh. They're saying Ben Simmons could be ready for the um, took first long round. Enough. He done took long enough ramping up. So he's too good for the plan? <laughs> That's what's giving. Right. He's giving. He's too good for the plan. Right. Mm. Um, but we got to go live during some of these matchups. We're going to have to. So we can't go live Wednesday because you're going to be working. If you all live to see another game. That'll be on Friday. We can go live Friday. I, oh, but you I might, work. I might be working Friday. We'll see. Sunday. <laughs> Yeah, Sunday, because I'll be off Sunday. So, yeah, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Sunday. So, stay Sunday. tuned. Make sure you got your notification bells on, because we're going to go live during one of those games on Sunday. It's going to be lit. But, y'all, let us know what y'all think down below. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe. Keep rocking with us. Um, check out Dylan's channel if you're here from mine. Check out my channel if you're here from Dylan. Turn your notification bells on. And until we talk to you guys next time. Peace.